She had only been in the job 18 months, but you had a chorus of people calling for her resignation. This seemed to be the one thing that everyone in Washington could agree on. She needed to step down. Yeah, bipartisan agreement on that, Trish, and the official word coming. Uh, she submitted her resignation, according to a statement from the Department of Homeland Security, to the uh, DHS Secretary Jay Johnson earlier today. He accepted her resignation. Again, 30 years of service, as you said. She'd been on the job for 18 months. And uh, now Johnson says that he is appointing as an acting head of the Secret Service a former agent, uh, Joseph uh, uh, Cheney. And he uh, retired in 2011, coming out of the private sector uh, back to the Secret Service to try and get them through this current particular challenge. He's also appointing the Deputy uh, Homeland Security Secretary to continue the review of what happened uh, when we had the fence jumping situation at the White House. So that's going to be handled outside of the Secret Service by the Department of Homeland Security's number two of officer. And separately, Johnson announcing that an independent panel is going to review uh, security protocols at the White House and review the Secret Service in general. That independent panel will be named shortly, and they're going to have to report uh, the deadline here, December 15th, according to Jay Johnson. But uh, Trish, uh, undoubtedly, we're going to hear, if not from the president, but from uh, the, his uh, press secretary, Josh Ernest, in just the next little bit as to what the president thinks about all this. But it seemed like the writing was on the wall yesterday after uh, Julia Pearson had a very tough time in front of the House Oversight Committee. You wonder, Peter, and you wonder, Sean, how much is simply a cultural problem within the Secret Service. I mean, this is not just her. You think back to 2009, you had the gate crashers at the White House State Dinner in 2012. You had agents leaving after allegations of using prostitutes in Colombia. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, we learned that Secret Service permitted an armed security guard with a criminal record to get on an elevator in Atlanta with the president. And then, of course, the fence jumper. I mean, how does this happen, Sean? Where's the accountability in all this? Uh, what kind of culture is it that allows these things to keep transpiring? Obviously, these are very, very sensitive and serious issues when you see these types of incidents as you've just described, Trish. I think it's really important, though, while they need to be looked at, there needs to be an independent review, and I think that that's appropriate. Let's not forget the men and women of, of the Secret Service who handle literally thousands of incidents every single year successfully. The sacrifices that they're making, willing to put themselves on the line, their lives on the line, missing uh, time with their families for months on end. We've got to remember how important they are in the jobs they're doing successfully. Let's look at, at the leadership. Let's look at some of the protocols. But let the American public remember the, the good men and women and, and what they're doing every single day to keep us safe. Peter Cook, we know that the Obama family was gone uh, the day the fence jumper incident happened. Might that have contributed at all to uh, people being a little bit more relaxed, shall we say, when it came to security threats? Well, you've got to imagine, Trish, that when the president and his family are not on the campus, not on the grounds, that there is uh, some opportunity for the Secret Service agents just naturally to let their guard down a little bit. But, uh, you know, in this instance, there are not a lot of excuses uh, to justify what Certainly happened, allowing not. the person to enter the building. And I think uh, that's probably one of the ramifications in all this, one of the consequences why Julia Pearson's leaving. 